It was a long drive today. <laughs> Our next performer is local, but he's not a special guest. He's very special, though, and he's even wearing a special outfit in San Francisco, which you will love when you see it. And um, he is the author of How I Learned to Snap, and he's a witch and a beautiful person. Please welcome Kirk Reed. <laughs> Thank you, it's so good to be home. Hi. Oh, so this is an elegy. Um, it's an elegy for the Circle J, uh, which was a sex club that started out in 1967, the year that um, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Cup Land was released. And since that time, men have been standing in this humble garage in the Tenderloin to help each other out. And I'd never been there all these years. And that night that I went in 2005, it was closing its doors forever. And the reason I went was because I read this article in the Bay Area Reporter by Zach Zemanski. And it seems to me like tranny boys are the only people who care about gay men's sex culture anymore. I want to smuggle each and every one of them into a bathhouse, like an FTM underground railroad. I want to see their faces light up when they first hear Bob Seger in the hallways, as their bare feet land on the floor of the steam room, as they make their first connections. But it's going to have to be another place besides the Circle J because this place is about to disappear. The Evangelical Youth Choir from next door wanted to expand. And they made the owner a better offer. That's what happens when your people are renters. So I went that last night and the man behind the glass smiled and said, Ten bucks. And this small handwritten note on the window said, Sorry, no more lube. So I went to the car to get my hooker bag, which has lube and small plastic bottles and condoms and cock rings and nipple clamps and everything, just everything. Because I was there to be generous. I was there to share. I'm the genre of sex worker, which is about sexual generosity. Most of the men in the theater were wearing clothes. They sat in church pews. They were jacking off. A few of them were bending over to suck their neighbors. And one man straddled another, while a third man worked his cock. All these men helping each other out. I put all my clothes in the basket 12 and I tagged the bracelet onto my wrist and I walked into the cinema room. You step off the street where these homeless men offer you a dollar to watch your car. It's raining. It's Mickey Spillane. It's hard boiled. It's Neo Beatnik. It's the place that the Beats forgot to write about. And just inside, it's a sanctuary where everybody's dimly lit, their skin is ablaze with porn. Hundreds of guys, they were filmed upstairs jacking off on the gold couch. In all the movies, you hear Hal Call, the owner of the Circle J, saying, that's the spirit, that's the spirit, that's the spirit. I just wonder what's gonna happen to that gold couch. In a rational world, it would go to the Smithsonian. <laughs> but it's closing night, and tonight they're selling off church pews for $10 a piece, seven in all. And this garage is mighty. It could hold 500. There are three other men back here when I arrive at 10 p.m., the final night. And this is the send-off. One man has a 49er shirt on, nothing else. One man standing naked in front of a large square mirror leaning unframed against the western wall. 
There are chairs here and there, odd chairs. There's a carpeted platform that even I wouldn't sit on bare-assed. The red rope lights rock and roll. They're playing Boston, Bad Company, Behind the Wall of Sleep by the Smithereens. Classic rock, bathhouse music. And I wonder, where's this music coming from? There's no DJ. Is it some satellite? Is it some mixtape? And the last song ever played at the Circle J was something I couldn't place. It was late 80s diva music. It was small town gay bar music. It was closing music. I don't even know which song, but it was abrupt. It was rock and roll, rock and roll, rock and roll, diva, then silence. Closing night at the Circle J.